Speaking about raising great kids, guys, Camille and Haley's parents, I want to introduce him. He wants to say a little something, but Pastor David and Sherry Harris, please welcome. And also, thank you for the great sound system today. My favorite person in the whole world, Sherry Harris, my wife. My favorite word in the whole English language is wife. Come on, man. My second one is Trump. We came from California. We couldn't stand the liberalism. We love red Oklahoma. We love our president today. Who loves President Trump? Let him hear it in D.C. Woo! We also love our eight children. We had one born right down the street at the uh, Kick 66 gas station in I-44. We, were, we took off with uh, six kids and we stopped at the gas station and we pulled out with seven. <laughs> so we're real Oklahomans, guys. And I'd like to say hi to my wife here, Sherry. Say hi to everybody. Hi, it's so nice to be here. I, I wanted to say one thing. Aren't we all tired of like we're, everybody's important, everything's important, all that we're doing, we have to assemble, we have to um, vote, we have to do all these things, but when it comes down to the last minute and people are cheating, aren't you tired of that? Yeah. I feel like, let's get the cheat, the, the, there's a cheat sheet out, okay? There's a way to bypass the courts that are corrupt and go straight to the court of heaven. Jesus Christ's blood made a way for us to come straight to the throne of God and to plead our case above the courts of the United States Supreme Court. There's a court of heaven where God makes decrees and where we can actually experience the, the victory. And I believe that today, if we will do that, if we will gather together and bypass our systems that are corrupt and go straight to the court of heaven and and pray and and as that song said uh, if my people who you know are called by my name will humble themselves we can humble ourselves today and in unity and add our prayers to the gentleman that's that prayed earlier to this earlier at the beginning of this meeting i was listening to that prayer i said lord this is a very powerful moment of agreement and i, I believe that right now we can change the destiny of our so nation sure. if we will humble ourselves and say Father God, I, I thank you for the blood of your son. I pray that it is applied to my sin so that I have access before you. And I pray right now that you will cause there to be justice in our country, that there will be a uprooting of evil in my own heart first and then in the heart of, of every leader in our community and in our federal government. And we pray, Father God, for a revival. We pray for yes, revival Lord. at the core, at the yes, core Lord. of our own selves. Yes, we can always look out there, but we have to be revived in our own heart. And we pray for a, a renewal of hunger for God, for his word, for his presence. I pray, Lord God, that we would, in unity right now, that you would accept our plea at the throne of, of the courts of heaven and that you would decree in our land that there will be a turn, that we will have a righteous people governing in our state, in yes, our a federal government. We pray this together in Oklahoma, representing our state before the, the country and before you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs> I have a word for you guys. I was standing where the Lord said, read this to them. Matthew 5, 44. But I say to you, love your enemies. Oh, I don't feel like loving my enemies today. Especially after the steal last night. I don't feel like loving them. But the Bible says, bless them who curse you and do good to them that hate you. And pray for them who desperately uses you and persuades you, speaks all manner of against you falsely. There is a warning from the Lord. We do not want to go from the silent majority to the violent majority. The Lord said, stay who you are. Love is stronger than hate. Our natural reaction is to rise up and become them. Don't become them. You have dominion in love. You are subservient when you hate somebody. Because I hate what's going on. You can hate the sin and love the sinner. We can't, as a, as a conservative movement, switch our loyalties to the devil because we want to get even. you got to make sure you're praying for your enemies. 
I have an example. I have to set. I have eight children that watch me go. Camille and Haley are my second and my third. I have my oldest one. She's 31. And my youngest one's 14. They watch and listen to everything that I say. So I got to make sure I pass it down. You know, it, it broke my heart. I cried so much. I was so happy when Camille said, my father always told me, show them respect. Look in their eyes and tell them thank you. Thank you for all that you've done. I didn't know she was going to do that. That Back to Blue song came out by the Holy Spirit. I'll tell you how it happened. It's going to go around the whole world. I know it's going to. I got up one morning and I looked in Austin Police Department. They defunded their police. I was so frustrated. I said, how could they do this? This is conservative Texas. How in the world is this happening? I called Camille on the phone. I said, Camille, you need to write a song for the police in Texas. She goes, Dad, that's funny. Back the Blue in Texas just called me and wants me to come and do a Back the Blue uh, rally. I said, okay, we're on to something. So I said this, I said, Camille, just listen to the Holy Spirit. Let God drop a song. He's gonna sing it right into your ear. And she goes, okay, Dad, will you pray the song on me? I prayed over the phone. I was in California. She was in Branson. And I said, get ready. It's coming to you. We to just write it down. Four hours later, she wrote that song. And that's where it came out, Back to Blue. We are known and read of all men. Our example is important. When we show the example of love and kindness and forgiveness to our enemies, our children will see it. Our families will reflect it because the family is the building block of society. I want to take a moment to pray for our enemies. Pray for those who despitefully use us. I don't know if you guys are used to raising your hands in church, but I know if you got a gun in your back, you'd surrender, right? You'd put your hands up. I don't know whether, what, what church you went to. I want us all to put our hands up for a second. And I want us just to forgive our enemies. And I, I mean it. Let's forgive them. I want us all to speak out loud right now and say, Lord, I forgive my enemies. I forgive those who despitefully, just speak it out. I want you to pray, ask the Lord to keep your heart clean from bitterness, from hatred. Lord, I forgive all those who have said things against our movement. I forgive those who have said things against our president. Lord, he is the best man we've ever had as a president of the United States. We pray for our president. We know that he's hurt. We know that he's inside of his heart. He's wounded. He can look out of his eyes and see how many things are going on. And he hurts for this nation. We pray for strength for him. Lord, keep him loving his enemies. Keep him clean in his heart from hate because it's so easy to do. Forgive us as a family for what we say around our kitchen table against people that we don't like. God cleanse the conservative movement so that we would be God's voice in this earth and you won't have to use somebody else. Use us. Here we are, Lord. Send us into this world. Lord, let revival come in this next year. Let us win this thing. Father, do not let the evil triumph over us. Father, we give you back this nation. You gave it to us and it's still yours and you can still have it. Win, win, win. Holy Spirit, thank you, Jesus. Bless us all. Bless you in the name of Jesus. Thank you for coming today. And we love Oklahoma. We love America. God bless America.